What if I told you Toyota just did what no other car company could? They've revealed a next-gen aluminum ion battery that delivers a jaw-dropping 1,000-mile range and can fully charge in just 5 minutes. Let that sink in. No more range anxiety. No more waiting hours at charging stations. No more excuses. At a surprise press event in Tokyo, Toyota dropped a bombshell that stunned the entire EV industry. CEOs from Tesla GM and BYD were reportedly in the room, and the look on their faces, speechless. Because this isn't just a step forward, it's a leap that may sideline lithium-ion entirely. It's fireproof, lighter, non-toxic, and doesn't rely on rare earths. This is the breakthrough the world has been waiting for. And it didn't come from Silicon Valley this time, it came from Japan. They said lithium was the future, that solid state was the final frontier. But Toyota just broke the silence with a 5-minute press event that left the EV world in total chaos. No teaser, no leaks, just raw specs on a screen. 1,000 mile range, full charge in 5 minutes, zero lithium, zero cobalt. At first people thought it was a joke, maybe just a marketing stunt. But what Toyota showed wasn't concept art. It was a functioning aluminum ion prototype, and it was backed by third-party validation. Peak charging speed, 1,200 kilowatts. Cycle life over 10,000 full charges with less than 5% degradation. Thermal stability was tested up to 250 degrees Celsius without a single failure. Industry insiders, well, they scrambled. This wasn't just a marginal improvement over Tesla's 4680 cells. It was four times faster, lighter, and non-flammable. It didn't need cobalt. It didn't rely on lithium mines buried under political tension. It just worked. Cleaner, safer, and honestly, infinitely more scalable. And the material behind it, aluminum, not rare, not toxic, not buried under monopolized territories. Aluminum is the third most abundant element on Earth, and it's already mined, traded, and recycled globally. Toyota didn't just improve EV batteries, they detonated the entire supply chain map. Here's the shocker. Nothing vented gas, not even a spark. That kind of stability isn't just safer, it's disruptive. You can mount these batteries under seats, inside doors, anywhere in the frame. No fear of fire. For regulators, insurers, and fleet operators, that changes everything. But here's the twist. While the public marveled at the specs, insiders panicked over what wasn't said. Toyota didn't mention lithium, not once. No comparison, no backward compatibility, just a cold, silent message to every automaker still betting on lithium-ion, you're now behind. Tesla, BYD, GM, even cattle, all caught off guard. Supply contracts, mining deals, billion-dollar gigafactories suddenly at risk. Because, well, this new battery doesn't use the same playbook. It doesn't need lithium extraction from South America. It doesn't require cobalt from the Congo. It doesn't care about geopolitics. And the range? This wasn't marketing math. Toyota's prototype sedan completed 1,000 miles on a closed track using a single charge while carrying the equivalent payload of a Camry. No hypermiling, no stripped-down test car, real-world drive, real load, and real speed. The implications are staggering. If mass-produced at scale, this would make current EVs obsolete in both cost and performance. Charging infrastructure would shrink. No more waiting 30 minutes. Highway rest stops would become 5-minute pit stops just like gas. But it's not just the speed, it's the chemistry itself. Aluminum is fireproof, non-toxic, and recyclable at 96% efficiency. And most importantly, it doesn't rely on scarce minerals hoarded by a handful of suppliers. That's where lithium begins to crumble. For two decades it wasn't just the backbone of clean energy, it was a monopoly controlled by a tight cartel of miners, processors, and middlemen from Chile to China. But now that grip is slipping. Between 2020 and 2023 lithium prices didn't just rise, they exploded. A 400% spike triggered panic. EV giants scrambled to lock in supply deals worth billions. Deals that are now aging like milk. And Toyota? They didn't just sidestep the chaos. They dismantled the system. With aluminum, they pulled the pin from a very fragile grenade. And that fragility goes deeper than economics. The majority of global lithium reserves are buried under the salt flats of Bolivia, Argentina and Chile. These are regions teetering on political chaos, nationalizations, protests, export bans. One presidential decree and the electric vehicle supply chain grinds to dust. Then there's cobalt, quietly essential to most lithium-ion chemistries. 
Over 70% of the world's cobalt comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo, where investigative reports continue to expose child labor and armed militia-run mines. It's the dark secret behind the electric vehicle revolution and Toyota just walked away from it. Aluminum doesn't carry that bloodstain, it's mined globally, traded cleanly, and recycled almost infinitely. Toyota's pivot could reduce lithium demand by 30% in the next 10 years. That's not a forecast, that's an economic collapse waiting to happen. One that lithium giants are praying doesn't come true. But while lithium is cracking, oil is panicking. The fossil fuel lobby has seen battery hype before, but not like this. Not with specs that directly outmatch combustion. For decades, range was the last stronghold of the gas engine. But a 1,000-mile battery, a 5-minute recharge, that's not competition, that's a kill shot. Internal combustion vehicles can't evolve their way out of this. An aluminum-ion Toyota Camry would leave even a gas-powered Lexus in the dust, not just in range but in efficiency, weight, and cost per mile. And it's not just the cars. The infrastructure itself is shifting. Gas station chains in Japan and California are reportedly considering one-megawatt aluminum-ion charging docks capable of fully charging a vehicle in less time than it takes to buy a coffee. No fumes, no fire hazards, just raw electricity delivered faster than ever imagined. This kind of transition doesn't dent oil, it guts it. Analysts now predict global petroleum demand could drop by 8 million barrels per day by 2035 if aluminum ion achieves scale. That's more than all of Canada's oil exports, wiped out not by regulation but by innovation. And that innovation isn't coming from Silicon Valley anymore. Inside Tesla, sources say Project Helix, which is like an emergency aluminum cell R&D sprint, was activated in less than 24 hours after Toyota's reveal. Engineers are being moved off Dojo and FSD to focus on battery chemistry full-time. The threat is real and honestly it's rising fast. Meanwhile, over in China, KTL and BYD are scrambling to retain control of a supply chain they thought they owned. Aluminum cuts them out. It basically erases the leverage they built with lithium dominance. Their executives are in emergency sessions pushing for patents, prototypes, really anything that could slow Toyota's momentum. The U.S. Department of Energy, caught flat-footed, has reopened archived aluminum-ion research from the early 2010s. Research it quietly shelved in favor of lithium. Now those dusty blueprints are being revisited under full lockdown and new patents are being filed at a record pace. Too late, maybe. But the tech race is no longer about who got there first. It's about who survives the shift. And in Japan, the reaction was even more telling. Media outlets dubbed Toyota's announcement the tech Pearl Harbor of the auto world. An ambush so precise, so disruptive, it instantly reshuffled alliances. Companies that once laughed off Toyota's slow EV adoption now crawled back to the table, scrambling for licensing deals. Even Elon Musk, never one to play defense, tweeted just two words after the reveal. Didn't expect that. No context, no bravado, just silence. Because deep down he knows this wasn't a press event. This was a declaration of war, and the war had already begun behind closed doors. Venture capitalists pulled back overnight, terrified by the sudden shift. Startups once valued in the billions like Lucid and Fisker found their long-range lithium bets evaporating. Their technology suddenly looked over-engineered, over-complicated and honestly about two years too late. The industry's fragile ecosystem was cracking and only the strongest would survive the fallout. Even legacy giants weren't safe. Ford, GM, Volkswagen, each had invested heavily in lithium infrastructure. Billions poured into factories, battery partnerships, supply deals across Chile, Australia, and China. Now every executive boardroom had one question on repeat, did we just lose the future to Toyota? And the ripple effects hadn't stopped. 
patent offices in Europe, the United States, and Asia reported record filings related to aluminum ion chemistry, many with Toyota's name at the top. Universities were flooded with grant money. Startups pivoted overnight. Governments rewrote policy memos. This wasn't a ripple, it was a rift. Inside boardrooms from Detroit to Munich, a single question now echoed, is it too late to catch up? Because, you know, Toyota wasn't slowing down. They had already mapped their next move aluminum ion integration into industrial transport, marine shipping, and even robotics. Their vehicles would soon power homes. And well, their energy systems would soon stabilize grids. And their battery, that silent, unburnable slab had become the single most valuable object in the entire auto industry. Elon Musk's team, despite the noise, hadn't cracked it. Chinese giants scrambled for alternatives. And the lithium lobby, once the gatekeepers of the EV age, saw their walls begin to crumble. The next chapter of the energy race wasn't going to be about lithium anymore or cobalt or oil. It would be about who controls aluminum ion and who gets left behind. Because the old world ran on combustion, the new one will run on something else entirely, and Toyota just lit the